Hello dear students. So today in our continuation with the atmospheric physics ionosphere discussions, we will try to see the formation of hydrogen ions in the top ionosphere. So we have uh, identified various layers of ionosphere. We have also seen what are the prominent types of ion species in each uh, different layer of ionosphere. Generally in the topmost part of the atmosphere or topmost part of the ionosphere, the most prominent ions are the hydrogen ions. So let us see how hydrogen ion concentration will change with respect to height in the ionosphere. So we will try to see the height distribution of hydrogen ions in ionosphere. So like for the rest of the ionosphere, we, are, we, uh, we can say that ions are formed by the uh, solar radiation that is incoming when it ionizes the species. So it is natural to expect that in the top part of the ionosphere, the energy is the most abundant. So that means all the X radiation, ultraviolet, X UV, all the radiation is, is, is the most abundant. And at the same time, one more uh, important aspect that we should consider is that the neutral species are least abundant. And hydrogen being the lighter or the lightest, it will try to occupy, will try to escape the gravitational pull and will try to occupy the upper altitudes of the Earth's atmosphere where it gets ionized by the, uh, by the incoming solar radiation. So the primary ionization for uh, hydrogen is, let us say, when hydrogen with a photon with less than a wavelength of 90 nanometers which is which is a, a threshold for the excitation potential or ionization potential gets ionized to H plus and electron. So this less than 90 nanometers is most important. So and the once the hydrogen ion thus formed can exchange its charge with an oxygen which is also present in the let us say in 150 or 200 kilometers altitude and can give up its charge to oxygen resulting in the formation of oxygen ions. So if you write the uh, production of uh, let us say the hydrogen ion, we can write that the concentration of H will be proportional to H plus and O, right. Or we can write that the concentration of hydrogen ions will be proportional to the concentration of hydrogen atoms divided by the concentration of oxygen atoms. So we can write, uh, we, can, we have also we already seen that in the topmost atmosphere, each species will behave its own with its own scale height. That means there is no scale height where you use the mean molecular weight. Rather, you, you calculate the scale height of each particular species because the mean free path being very, very large, each species will behave as if it, it alone is occupying the entire atmosphere. So we can write, uh, we can include the scale height dependences by saying the H plus is proportional to exponential minus h by scale height of hydrogen plus h by the scale height of oxygen. So you have a you have oxygen appearing in the denominator. So obviously, when you rise it to the numerator, it will be plus h by h naught. So we know that the scale height of the oxygen in respect to the scale height of the hydrogen, they will be in the ratio of 1 is to 16, right. So if you substitute, uh, we can say that the scale height of hydrogen is 16 times the scale height of oxygen. If you substitute this into this expression, what you will get is, you will realize that the concentration of H plus ions will be proportional to exponential minus H divided by 16 times the scale height of oxygen plus H by the scale height of oxygen, right. So simplifying this expression, we will get the concentration of hydrogen ions in the atmosphere will be exponentially, let us say 15 H by, which implies that the hydrogen ion concentration 
will increase with respect to the height. So, this is the most important thing about the hydrogen ion. Generally, in, in, the, in our atmospheric physics discussions so far, we have never seen a species which is increasing with respect to the height. We, all, we always seen every species density will decrease exponentially with the height, but we have never seen a exponentially increasing function so far. So, because of its uh, charge exchange or because of its low mass, hydrogen being available in the higher atmosphere on the upper atmosphere has a natural tendency to increase with respect to the height. So, this is something uh, very important about the hydrogen ions. Now, in, in continuation to this, we have uh, several times made a uh, remark saying that although the atmosphere is made up of, uh, the ionosphere is made up of three layers D, E and F, there are few layers which will disappear during the night time due to the, uh, due to the least amount of ionization that is available and at the same time due to the fact that the direct sunlight is not available during the night time. So, in today's class we will try to see what are the factors which will influence the formation of the F layer and what are the factors which will influence which will uh, decide whether the night time the F layer should be existing or not. Okay. So, generally when a, we have seen that generally when a positive ion collides with a neutral molecular nitrogen the ion can exchange places with one of the atoms and this kind of a process is called as the ion atom rearrangement. So, while we were discussing the availability of uh, the electron density or ion density during the night time and we have also calculated the time scales over which the ion density uh, will recombine with the electron density and we have seen some processes will be able to take care of the entire electron density within a few minutes while some other processes will take several days for the electron density to be removed from the ionosphere. So, if you have uh, both these processes working together at the same time let us say in the ionosphere at a particular altitude, it may so happen that one process of course can of course get rid of all the available electrons. But the occurrence of this process is also decided by the availability of other species, let us say oxygen ion. And some other processes which are very slow will eventually decide whether the ion density will remain in the throughout the night or will be, uh, will be removed by some time after the sunset. Right. So, when a positive ion, oxygen ion collides with a neutral molecular nitrogen, the ion can exchange places with one of the atoms in the molecule and this is called as the ion atom rearrangement reaction and atom re rearrangement. So, let us say what happens in this process is that an oxygen ion which is which is uh, most likely to be found in the 150 or 180 kilometers altitude when it comes together with a molecular nitrogen you will get to see the formation of a nitric oxide ion plus nitrogen. So, here the molecule is rearranged to take care of the additional positive charge that is available. Let us call this reaction as A. Similarly, when it collides with a neutral molecular oxygen, so when the oxygen ion uh, collides with a nuclear neutral molecular oxygen, let us say O plus plus O2, just like that, there will be again charge exchange plus O. Let us say we call this process as B. So, once either of these reactions has taken place, there is a positive neutral molecular ion available in the ionosphere. So, once any of these two reactions, let us say whether depending on the uh, availability of O2 or N2, the most important thing that happens in terms of recombination is that atmosphere has now the available molecular ions. These two are, let us say, these two are the molecular ions. What is the advantage of having molecular ions is that they participate in the dissociative recombination reactions. That means, let us say dissociative recombination reactions when, when they participate, let us say electron plus N O plus will now give you N plus O. So, now the molecule is dissociated, N O plus molecule is dissociated into N plus O. So, this process is called as the dissociative recombination. What is the importance of this process? Now, the electron if, if it gets in contact with 
O2 plus it will give O plus O. So, the most important aspect about the dissociative recombination is that the dissociative recombination is very fast. The dissociative recombination can take care of the electrons very uh, in a very uh, in, a, in a higher speed in comparison to any other process. That means, if there are more molecular ions available in the ionosphere, the electron density will be taken care or electron density will be removed from the ionosphere much quickly. But if it is not the case, if, if, if you run out of all the molecular ions, ultimately the electrons uh, have only the other type of atomic ions which will take a lot of time for the recombination to process to, to continue. Right. So, that means that it only depends on the extent to which molecular ions concentration is available in the ionosphere that will decide the availability or the existence of a particular layer of ionosphere during the night time or not. If you see more further into these details, right. So, let us try to graphically understand this, pro this particular problem. Let us suppose we call this process as A and B. So, keep a note of these two processes, we will use these processes with their equation numbers. Let us suppose the equation A is the appropriate process by which electrons are removed. Let us say we have equation A by which electrons are removed from the ionosphere. So, it removes ions from a unit volume is the rate at which it removes the ions per unit volume is equal to the rate at which they are produced. So, let us say Q is the production rate. Now, the rate at which the ions are removed from by the channel of process A will be equal to the rate at which the electrons or ions are produced. So, we always make the plasma approximation valid that means there are always enough number of e e not enough equal number of electrons and ions in a cubical volume wherever you take. Right. So, if it is the case the Q is K D times O plus N 2. Right. So, where K D is the rate coefficient, K D is the rate coefficient. Right. So, electrons are produced also at the rate q will, will disappear by the reaction. So, let us say now the electrons will uh, we have already seen if this process continues electrons plus n o plus will give you n plus o. Right. Let us say let us call this as equation c and this as d. So, now you write uh, the rate at which electrons are lost is Q is equals to alpha times E times N O plus. Now, what is alpha? K D is the rate coefficient by which uh, process A will happen and alpha is the recombination coefficient. So, it tells you how much amount of recombination will happen given the uh, given the species that appear on the left hand side. right? So, well alpha is so from C we can write that from equation C we can write the density of O plus is Q by K D times N 2 and from D we can write the N O plus density as Q by alpha times So, I have just taken two processes and these two processes will just make uh, molecular ions available in the ionosphere and molecular ions have more tendency to recombine with electrons at a much faster speed. Right. So, now if you impose charge neutrality at this point, so what we have been able to do is we have been able to in terms of reaction rate coefficients and the recombination rate coefficients, we have been able to write the density of O plus, the ion density that is trying to recombine or the ion density that is trying to create molecular ions by the ion atom rearrangement process. Then the density of NO plus, the density of NO plus is an indication of the number of electrons that can be taken care or that can be removed from the ionosphere by the molecular, uh, by the dissociative recombination reaction. If you combine these two or if you impose charge neutrality or let us say quasi neutrality, we can say that the total electron density at any given moment will be equal to the concentration of N O plus plus the concentration of O plus. That means, total negative charge is equal to the total positive charge. So, we can write that the electron density is now Q by K D 
n 2 plus q by alpha times e or 1 by q is 1 by k d n 2 times e plus q by alpha e square. Right. So, let us call this equation as uh, t. So, this is let us call this equation as e. Okay. Now, so in this expression in e in the expression e k d times n 2 represents the loss coefficient represents the loss coefficient which has the same height dependence as n 2. So, n 2 has an exponential decay as you go up. So, k d n 2 also has a similar height dependence as n 2 right. So, we can now conveniently write this as in terms of the scale height dependence or the height dependence as 1 by q is 1 by beta h times e beta h is k d n 2 plus 1 by alpha e square. Now, so the, the resulting electron concentration at any given height will depend on the relative contributions of these two. So, right. So, what are these two? Let us let us just look at these two. So, q by alpha this one is, is the recombination term and this one is the production term for the for the uh, molecular ions. Right. So, let us say so the resulting so q is the production rate. q is the rate at which electrons are produced, alpha is the rate at which electrons are recombining to give neutral species, E is the electron density. Right. So, it is natural to expect that the resulting electron density at any given height will depend on the balance between the terms which let us call this term as 1 and let us call this term as 2 on the balance between 1 and 2, how they contribute towards the total production rate. So, let us we can say that at a particular height h t at a particular height h t we can say that at this height term 1 will be equal to term 2 right. That means, b, so let us say beta now h being taken at the limit h t times electron density becomes equal to alpha times e square. So, beta of h t is alpha times e. So, this is the balance between the uh, production of uh, molecular ions and the and the uh, recombination rates right. So, at shorter distances what we what what will generally happen at shorter distances above the peak q decreases upwards proportional to the concentration of of oxygen being ionized. So, that means q will be the at very shorter distances it will be proportional to exponential minus h divided by the scale height of oxygen. Right. So, let us say below h t. So, we have seen that above h t uh, at, at, at the height h t this is the uh, equality both of them are equal below h t we can say that only this term will be dominant term number 1. That means, so below h t we can write q is equal to alpha times e square and above h t we can write q is equal to beta h times e. So, this is the h t is the height where both the pro, both these processes are equal. Now, let us look at these parameters graphically let us say how, how do they look like. Let us try to look graphically how the solution how this uh, expressions will look like. Okay, let us say we plot the production rate first let us say we, we have uh, below h t we have q is equal to alpha times e square and above h t we have q is equal to beta h times the electron density. Right. Let us say if you see the q, 
the production rate it will look something like this. So, let us say this is H naught, H naught is the peak of production. So, this will look something like this. Let us call this as panel 1. Then the other parameter that is important for us is the electron density. So, electron density will look something like where H naught is again identified as the. So, this is Q, the rate of production, then this is electron density which is equals to Q by alpha raised to the power of half. Let us call this as 2. Let us say then the other parameter that we should look at graphically is the electron density above uh, as per this expression let us say. So, let us say let us we call this as F let us call this as G F and G. So, this is now this is F and G will look something like this. where no electron density can be written as Q by beta H. Let us call this as 3. What I have done is I have drawn the production rate Q as a function of height, the electron density as a function of height assuming that the electron density is following the equation that is given by F and again the electron density following the equation that is given by G. Right. So, if f alone, so the original expression that we had, had these two terms, 1 by q is 1 by beta h times the electron density plus 1 by alpha times e square, right. So, if the total production or the total electron density is alone by this process, then the electron density will look like this. If the total production is by this process, then the electron density will look like this, but these two processes are equal at a height h t, right. So, if f alone, f alone is applicable throughout, then the electron distribution will look like uh, what you see in 2 and if g alone is, is responsible, then you will see uh, the curve uh, given in 3, right. So, below the peak production q increases upwards and beta h decreases upwards. Why does the beta h decreases upwards? Beta h decreases upwards because, uh, because of the uh, because of the decrease in the nitrogen density, N2 density will decrease as a function of height, right. So, right. So, what you see here is beta H is indicative of the decreasing N2 density, but beta H is appearing in the denominator. So, the electron density will de will increase as beta H is decreasing, right. So, this decreases the electron density increase. That is what you see here. You see that the electron density is increasing at a particular speed, right. And at the same time Q with height with height, let us say with height is increasing, beta h will decrease, q will of course, q, q is also increasing, right. So, combining these two increases, combining this increase and decrease, electron density will will increase at a particular point, right. But after that point, let us say, so what you see here is a increase, the slope of this increase is slightly different. That is because after this particular height h naught, you see that q is decreasing with respect to height beta h is of course decreasing at all heights. So, the second equation is this one is decreasing of course and this one is again decreasing now, right. So, the resulting uh, electron density change will look something like this, right. Now, let us say uh, at very short distances above the peak Q decreases upwards proportional to the concentration of oxygen being ionized. So, it will be proportional to exponential oxygen being ionized. So, it will be, it will depend on the scale height of oxygen, right. Let us call this as equation H and beta H, beta of H decreases proportional to the concentration of nitrogen exponential minus H by scale height of nitrogen. Let us call this equation as now, since beta h decrease is more rapid than that of q, beta h appears to be the dominator. I mean, it, 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 it seems to dominate the electron density curve. So, we can combine these two dependencies and we write electron density is proportional to the rate at which oxygen is being offered and the rate at which nitrogen density is, be, is decreasing with respect to the height, right. So, we can write that exponential 
plus h times 1 by scale height of nitrogen minus 1 by scale height of oxygen. We know that the scale height of oxygen by the scale height of let us say nitrogen they are to the ratio of 1.75. Right. So, we will use this into the expression above we can write electron density will be proportional to the exponential 0 0.75 h divided by scale height of oxygen. Right. So, we will we'll again, so we have one height which is 1 by q is 1 by beta h electron density plus 1 by alpha is square. Now, if we combine these two plots, let us say we have we now have two heights, h t is the height where these two terms are equal, h naught is the height at which q or e peaks. Right. Let us combine these two plots, we have h t and h naught. Now, we are, we are going to look, look at the combined, let us say, so we are going to look at this plus this. Let us say we call this 1 and 2, 1 plus 2 and we will have to see what is the height h t in comparison with h naught and how does it decide whether a f layer a f layer peak will emerge or not. So, let us say uh, we, we take h naught being the height. So, we have seen that this is 1 and the second one is right. Now, what you see? We can see that uh, this is beta h of course, this is this one, this one is 1 and this one is 2. What do you see? You see that at this point, at this point both of them are equal, 1 is equal to 2. So, we can call this as h t. So, now we can say that h t is now lying above h naught, right. So, the com combined one we can write, we can draw as this. Now, similarly, let us see the possibility when h t uh, will be greater than h naught. Okay. We will consider a similar situation, but just so that these two are not equal at a particular point. This is 1. Two is right. So here at this point, these two are equal. So this is now H T, and here at this point this is the peak. So, this is h naught. So, here we say that h naught is greater than h t. Right. So, if you combine these two, the combined profile will look like this. So, again this is 1 and this is 2. So, in the ionosphere there is a transition from, from the height h naught to a height h t. So, that means there are at up to a particular height the first term will be dominant after a particular height the second term will be dominant. So, we can say that we can so here we, we will be able to clearly identify the ionospheric peak. So, let us say this is the this is the ionospheric peak. So, here you see a peak f layer. So, here no peak. 
So, we say that the dependent the, the, the availability of the ionospheric peak will just depend on the uh, transition between H0 and H t. So, we say that H t greater than H0 gives you the peak of F1, H t less than H0, no peak. So, this is about the composite F layer. So, when does the F layer form? When do, when do you see the F1 layer? I mean, when you do not see the F1 layer? That is a basic idea here, right. So, we can stop here. So, in today's class, we have seen how the hydrogen ion density will increase with respect to the height after a particular altitude due to the availability of a large amount of solar radiation. And then we have seen what factors will decide whether the F1 layer should appear or whether the F1 layer should not appear, right.